invite you to come into the sanctuary. We'll start our service with a song. A beautiful summer morning deserves the song of I Owe the Lord a Morning Song. It's in the Mennonite Hymnal 479, if you want to use the hymn. Welcome to our worship service here this morning at a live church effort. We're glad you could be with us. And we hope this morning that we can offer hope, life, and love in the name of Jesus here. And uh, take a look at your bulletin this morning. We have um, a handful of notes uh, and announcements and opportunities to help with a few different uh, mission organizations that are local here. And also some opportunities like a craft morning and um, an expo, but you got to take a look at some of them uh, on your own there in the bulletin. The one that I wanted to highlight is that next Sunday, we're going to get ready for church carpet cleaning. So if any of you feel strong and have the time, we would love for a few um, of you to help move furniture and a few things just to get ready for that. Um, and that's going to be next Sunday, August 18th. And you can contact Delmar Brubaker if you have any questions or uh, need to know where to meet. Also, there's still a need for some, some uh, people to sign up for the City Gate lunches, which is going to be a sack lunch. And if you have any questions on that, I believe it's uh, Janelle Martin can be contacted for information on that. Also, don't, uh, don't forget that we have a prayer meeting here Wednesday nights. You're welcome to join for that. And also, I was told to make the announcement that there's still a need for some help on fourth Sundays to help in the nursery. So if that would be uh, a calling that you feel, um, I believe Macy's going to be helping with that, but could use uh, one more adult to help take care of those little rascals on Sunday mornings on the fourth Sunday. Uh, wouldn't be my kids, of course. But um, I had asked uh, Roy to bring front the offering this morning and also offered to have the prayer for that as well. So. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you again for the blessings that you give us every day. Thank you for the, the privilege that we have to share these blessings this morning in the form of 
an offering. Lord, may you bless it. May you multiply it and give it to its uh, designated place. We just thank you for this congregation and the support that we can give. And uh, yeah, thank you for what you've all done for us. Amen. Thank you, Roy, for that. All right, as we continue in our service this morning uh, for a call to worship, I wanted to share a little bit about my week, and as I was preparing for this, kind of looked back on my week, and I was like, what stood out? Because it was a pretty typical week, aside from the hurricane and a lot of rain and a little more time in the office than I would usually get, since it's a little muddy um, to be out digging on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. It was... Uh, you know how it was. So uh, we're going to be continuing on in our series about the armor of God. And this morning, Pastor David is sharing about uh, the shield of faith and looking into that a little bit. And as I look back over my week, it's like, where did the shield of faith come into play for me or the armor of God as a whole? And I worked on a couple of different job sites, even though it was a short week out there in the field. Um, I ran across, as I always do, some interesting fellows out there. As you work in commercial construction, you meet all kinds. And this week again, I found myself um, kind of on the fringes of a conversation I didn't necessarily want to be a part of. Um, But you're there and you overhear um, the way some of these guys talk out on the job site. And it's like, uh, whether it's coarse joking or just foul language, which I've unfortunately become pretty hardened to, um, I have to remember that as a child of God, I need to be different and um, stand my place for what I believe is right. Um, But it still becomes uncomfortable at times. And even though I didn't find myself faced with the flaming arrows of the evil one, as it says in Ephesians, um, I still found myself uh, uncomfortable and uncertain how to react in in those situations. Um, But again, I'm reminded how important it is that as I go out every week, every day sometimes, to go out fitted with the armor of God. Um, And it's not just the shield of faith that I need to take with me, but also the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with readiness, Uh, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spear. They all come into play and work together um, so that I can't be pierced from any angle as I walk out with the armor of God. But um, taking and and, uh, utilizing every one of those pieces of the armor not only helps me or you to stand in battle, um, as simple as it might seem throughout our day to day, you know, we're not necessarily faced with death, but we're faced with a lot of circumstances where we need to rely on God and the Spirit's leading in our lives to um, not just stand our ground, but to make a difference and to be um, uh, maybe a role model to our children, to our classmates, or to our coworkers. Um, so wearing that armor of God and, and keeping things fitted tight uh, helps me to uh, be a positive impact to those around me and to you as well. Um, so I wanted to read from Hebrews 12, the first couple of verses it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be here this morning to to worship together, to look into your word and to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to be made ready as we um, learn what it means to go out to battle each day with the armor of God fitted in place so that we can be um, whole and um, protected, but rely on you and um, be a warrior for you. For you. Um, we pray this morning that you would comfort those who are hurting, uh, who uh, need uh, healing, and we pray for that, God. We know that you are the healer, and you care more for us than we can even imagine. And we also pray for uh, the missionaries that we have out in the field right now, 
um, that you would be their strength, that you would fit them with the armor, that they can be ready and also prepared for battle, whatever that might look like. I pray for the remainder of our service this morning and for David as he brings the message. May uh, your words fill his mouth uh, and open our hearts and our ears to what you are speaking to us this morning. Uh, In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we come into our time of worship, we're going to do something a little bit different. I don't normally do this, but the first couple songs, we're going to do Sunday school songs. And I have asked for some helpers. We talked to them a little bit earlier, and they're not sure, but I've asked for the primary kids to come up, up on the stage here and sing with Brenda and Peg and Jerry. These are songs we all know, and we're all going to sing, but the kids are going to come up and help us too. The first one is the B-I-B-O-A. Yay, Trey. Here they come. Just stand up around here. That's fine. Yay, they're coming. Thank you for coming. I haven't sung these songs for a while. Maybe you have, but I haven't sung the B-I-B for a long time. So let's do it together. And everyone helps sing, all right? Here we go. Motions is the this little light of mine. So let's get your fingers up, get your light up. If you need help, the ladies behind you will help. But I think you know this one. We're gonna start off this little light of mine. Jesus loves 
Continue singing, How Great is the Lord, is faithful and just.
thank you for leading us in those songs. And it was very appropriate to have the children front to sing as well. I'm amazed continually by the simpleness of God's message, of who Jesus is, how much he loves us. And our children's songs, they say it so simply and so perfectly. And so, thank you. Let's have a word of prayer before we enter the uh, word of the Lord here this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love for us. Father, I thank you that in so many ways it is very simple. You have made it simple. But Father, we sometimes complicate it and make it feel more like it is. And yes, there is an enemy who is wanting to frustrate us and, uh, yeah, just to disrupt the simplicity of your love for us. And so, Lord, may you give us wisdom. Uh, You have given us wisdom. Lord, may we take this armor that you have uh, set before us and given us, and may we use it like you intended it to be used. And so, Lord, I, I just pray a blessing over your word here this morning. I pray that you would speak to us through it and that uh, we can grow more and more in your ways and your will here today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you to each of you for being here. Uh, it's always good to gather together in the name of the Lord to look at his word. And I've been blessed in so many ways today already. Um, yeah, so as has been mentioned, we are in the middle of a series of, about the armor of God, which is found, um, particularly what we're preaching out of is Ephesians chapter 6, which is Paul, part of Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. Um, and just a reminder, thinking about the nation or the, the city of Ephesus, uh, this had become a center of worship of many gods. And so uh, I bring that up because I think it applies into our lesson today, Uh, about the shield of faith. Um, There is faith. We can demonstrate faith in many things, but not everything is true. And so it's important that we know what to base and put our faith in. Um, And and this shield of faith, uh, as we talk about that, is going to be so important. This, This city of Ephesus and the church of Ephesus, as they began and walk, began to walk with the Lord, struggled in many ways with all these different influences and uh, religions, if you will, um, and the different gods that existed, and they struggled to separate themselves from that and to remain faithful church to God. Um, and so I bring that up for us to think about this context that Paul was speaking into because of this uh, I'm sorry, my mic is coming and going really loud. Um, Yeah, because of the lesson we're talking about here today. So if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, um, verse 10 to 16. um, We're going to particularly, I'm going to read through it all, but we're going to focus on verse 16 today, this shield of faith. Starting at verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done all things, or everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So we're going to focus on verse 16 here. Um, If you would like to hear the previous sermons uh, related to this um, series, you can check out our webpage, has those on. Um, Jeff has done a great great job in uh, preaching on the previous two uh, messages. So we're not going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the shield of faith today. And so I like to define things by the terms that are used in the Bible, by God's terms. And so let's define the shield of faith by what Paul meant 
and but what God understands us or wants us to understand about this shield of faith. So a shield, what is a shield? Well, Paul, as we mentioned, was in prison when he wrote this, and so he likely experienced soldiers maybe right with him, observed them, or uh, so th this was fresh on his mind. And so as I looked up shield and what it meant in scriptural terms or biblical terms on the Romans, I found that there was likely two different types of shields they had. One might have been a smaller round one that, or roundish, that was carried a lot lighter and it was carried around on maybe their day-to-day -day duties. Um, another one uh, was called a scudum. And I have asked Cheryl to put up a picture of, of what a scudum looked like and how it was used. And so a scudum was much larger. It was roughly two feet by four feet. And uh, it was used quite a bit differently. Yes, it was a, sh a protection, uh, but it was primarily used in a setting like this where they were going out to battle. Um, and you know, we're talking about a battle, a spiritual battle that we're in. And so I thought this picture was very fitting and helped give me a, a picture of what maybe Paul was really thinking about. And so I don't want to minimize the fact that a shield could have also been a smaller round one that we carry around as individuals on a daily basis. Um, and that's part of it. God also laid on my heart very specific, specifically today the way that this shield, the scudum, was used um, and how it applies as a group. As you can see, there's a whole group of soldiers or a regiment, if you will, that are walking together and are using this shield to shield the entire group. Um, and so it wasn't just an individual thing. It was a community effort. And, and they used this to approach the front lines of the battle they were in. It wasn't, um, we often think about as a shield being a defense, and it is. But this shield used in this way allowed that group of soldiers to march right up to the front line and actually engage the enemy in a much more one-on-one -on -one combat. Because the enemy was launching arrows and, sp and spears, uh, many of which they, they used things that caught fire. They would light them on fire. And so... They were launching arrows at a great distance, and if they didn't have protection, they were kept really far from the front line of the battle. And so this shield was developed, this concept was developed to allow them to get right into the battle. When I looked at that and thought of this process or what this shield is about, I realized that there's a whole lot more to this shield of faith than maybe meets the eye initially because that deepens my understanding of what Paul meant about this shield. Yes, it is a defense, but it's a defense that allows us to get right up to that front line where God wants to do his real battling. And without it, we end up not actually getting to the battle. So that's my understanding of a scuttle and looking at that. So Paul could have been talking about either one of these, but because he uses the term flaming arrows I think it's quite likely he was referring to this one. But that in no way minimizes carrying a shield around and using uh, the concept of a shield um, and our spiritual concept as being um, an individual shield because we do walk as individuals inside a community of faith, but there are times when we need to pick up a small shield and use it as well. So there's two different concepts. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. So this is a shield, and Paul specifically calls it a shield of faith. And so let's real quickly try to define faith, which is not necessarily that simple. And yet there's a few scriptures uh, that God has given us through different writers and different books um, that kind of paint a pretty big picture uh, real quickly. And the first of those is... Um, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, is known as the faith chapter in Hebrews. And right at the beginning of this book, in verse 1, of chapter 11, the writer defines faith. He says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And so as simple as that sounds, it takes a little bit to really let that settle in. It's a confidence in what we hope for. So hope in something is that you maybe don't have it right now, but it's something to come. But it's confidence that what I'm hoping for, my hope is not empty, it's coming. I anticipate it because of reasons X, Y, and Z. 
And it's an assurance about what we do not see. And so it's, it's building this up to, it's not just a, an empty hope. It's based on something. It has a foundation and a structure, and it's meaningful. That's how hope, faith is described um, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. The book of James also talks a lot about, uh, or James in his letter talks a lot about faith. Um, in, J- faith in James chapter 17, uh, the second part of James chapter 17, um, he says, faith by itself is not accompanied, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And so James is saying, faith by itself, if it's just a belief and a thought that we put into ourselves, and there's no action ever taken on it, that faith is dead. So he, he widened this understanding of faith. It's not just something up here. It has to be demonstrated by action. And two verses later, in uh, chapter 2, verse 17 of James, I'm um, sorry, verse 19, he says, you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the de- demons believe that and they shudder. And so, again, he's emphasizing this point, believing in Christ. Believing is not alone. It's not sufficient. Because the demons believe, and they're clearly not on God's side. And so, this definition of faith uh, is, is going beyond believing. It's trusting in God, in something that we may not yet know or have experienced. But because of what we already know, or God, in this case, God's faithfulness in the past, we build a foundation of understanding that if God, if we believe God is leading us and taking us into the unknown because of his faithfulness in the past, we can trust that going forward, he is going to be the same faithful God and consistent God that he always has been. And then we act on it. Just believing that, again, is not enough. And so the way we live our lives depends on it. If I were to say, I have full faith in airplanes, they take off, they land, I see it all the time, but I'm just never going to fly. Does that demonstrate my faith in it? It sort of seems like it demonstrates a fear. That's maybe not a perfect example, and you could put many other things uh, into an example like that, but uh, like a salesman of a product that this, this is the greatest product ever, but they've never used it. They never had it themselves. If that becomes part of your story of understanding that salesman, you're like, I don't know. Is it, is it possible to be a really good salesman of a product you've never used or never had? Or... You get my point. We have to believe, and we have to live out uh, what this faith is. And so that's, I believe, what the definition of faith is in a kind of a nutshell. It's much more expansive than that. And this whole book, God's Word, is is about faith, living faithfully to Him and God's faithfulness. And so that's another part of this uh, study on the shield of faith that fascinated me. When we talk about the armor of God, Paul made it very clear this is just that. It's armor of God. It's not yours and mine. And so when we're talking about faith, If I were to rely on the faithfulness of myself and the faithfulness of you or the faithfulness of humanity in itself, well, this book shows clearly that from the beginning, humanity has not been very faithful at all. And so I have to believe that I'm I'm no better. And that's, that's why it's not my armor. It's God's armor. And so this faith that we are to demonstrate and use as an armor of God, it's not ours. Which is kind of confusing. Because our faith is dependent on something else, right? Our faith in God is dependent on His faithfulness. And so it is God's faithfulness that is our armor. And this book from beginning to end and still being written in our lives, in the lives around us, is a demonstration of God's faithfulness. And it is unbending. It is unchanging. It has forever been and forever will be. And that's why 
when we talk about our faith, we are basing our faith on God's faithfulness and nothing more. And it has to be that way. Because if we're basing our faith on somebody else, we're going to be disappointed and left down, and it's going to shake and rattle that. And then it's not really an armor anymore, is it? But God's faithfulness is our armor. And when we lean into it and believe and just understand who he is more and more, that's when our armor, the armor we pick up of God's faithfulness, begins to shed the arrows of the enemy. Wow. Okay, so that's faith. And that's part of the shield of faith. Another, a couple more things to define in this are the flaming arrows of the evil one. The, the reason we're using this shield is to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. And so an interesting thing about the, the scutum uh, that was uh, pictured there is they often were made out of wood. Sometimes they were overlaid with a metal of some sort. Um, more commonly, I found that they were overlaid with leather. Uh, for the purpose of they would dip it in water before they went into battle, and uh, they carried this out, and its purpose of, was to extinguish the fire or the flame that was part of these arrows. And so um, they adapted and figured out exactly what they needed to do to defend themselves against these arrows, these flaming arrows. Well, that's what the physical understanding of the shield's purpose was. But spiritually speaking, what, what are these arrows the flaming arrows of the evil one that we find launched at us, um, oftentimes from a great distance. Without this protection, we are, we are vulnerable. From great distances, the enemy is, is catching us off guard. His goal is to trip us up. And so he's not coming at us where it's obvious and right in front of us. He's coming at us at a distance and meeting us at places where we're not prepared and where we're not ready. And if we're not careful, we have our guard down. And so it's important to be able to recognize these flaming arrows or darts of the enemy. They look like uh, in times of weaknesses or mistakes or things that we've done that might catch us off guard. Or it might be a really joyous moment and we're we've left our guard down a little bit and the enemy launches a word of something into the conversation, the experience. Maybe it's through another person, um, but it's a word of discouragement. Or maybe it's a word of pride or something that, that has no place in God's kingdom. And, and it doesn't uh, serve to encourage or build us up. But a word of discouragement. Maybe it's a word of shame or condemnation. Or maybe it's fear. Because of a situation, the enemy launches in and says, well, you, can't, you can't trust us. This is... And so fear rises up. Those are ways that the enemy launches arrows into our experience. Uh, he disrupts relationships. His goal is to disrupt anything good of God in whatever context you may find. And yes, he, he is about anything other than what God is about. And so if we're not prepared, even at a great distance, with a shield fit to extinguish those flaming arrows, they're going to cause damage. And it may be individually. Most of life, we're, we're not in a group setting like this. And so uh, we're on our own at times where we face uh, circumstances and things. Uh, yes, it might be in your family or your, with your spouse, uh, but there's, there's battles that we're at times physically alone, and we need to learn how to pick up that shield of faith in those times and extinguish those arrows. And that's where God's faithfulness comes in. The water, the design of that shield is God's unending faithfulness where we can look back and we can see how he has delivered people through truth, through words. We can see how Jesus himself dealt with temptation when he uh, began his ministry. Um, he, he called out exactly what the problem was, the, the things with his identity. He said, I'm, or Satan 
tempted him every time as being, if you are the son of God, then do this. And the temptation would have been to, to take that power that God had given his son and to use it for something that was um, selfish, self-centered. It didn't benefit the kingdom. And in short, it didn't look very threatening. But it was giving in, and, and the source of it was from the enemy. And so if the source is from the enemy, no matter what it looks like, run from it. Speak truth at it. And don't let it cause any damage. And so that's the taking up of the shield. The flaming arrows. And there's so many ways in which the enemy will attack us. He, uh, yeah, he will adapt to whatever he needs to because his goal is to trip us up. And so we, we need to recognize and, and call out those, those arrows for what they are and use the scripture, use God's faithfulness to influence us to be able to hold up and, and stand strong on what God has told us. And that's our faith being lived out in action. The last part I'd like to bring up here, uh, this isn't kind of the first part of it, uh, it says to take up the shield. There's action. As I mentioned, faith is action. This shield is, does us no good if, if we know all the history, we know all of God's story, all of his faithfulness, we know the stories from Egypt and the children of Israel, and then we come to a difficult time in our lives and we're dragging the shield behind us. Oh, that's part of our story, but I'm not going to use it now. God delivered us. He, he walked us out of trouble so many times. Lovingly, he cared for us. But now we're up against the Red Sea, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to happen, and so we lose faith. The children of Israel demonstrate that journey very clearly, a journey that I feel like myself walk through at times, and I find myself what am I doing here wondering how I'm going to get out of this? Because God has walked faithful me before. How can I not see him carrying me through this in whatever way he chooses to? And so we need to take it up. We've, we've seen and we read God's faithfulness about it. But if we don't do anything with it, it's like dragging the shield behind us, walking into a battle thinking that we got it. And so we have to take that and apply it. Again, it's God's faithfulness, not ours. God's faithfulness. Wow. That covers all the things that I would like to reference and define. So God has called us to take up this shield, to act on it, and to um, use it to carry us into the battle. As was pictured on that picture, we're, we're not just standing at a distance and deflecting all the arrows, because that's not the full story that God has for us, is it? The rest of this armor includes the sword of the Spirit, and we'll get into that in the future. But we're not just to be huddled in a group at a great distance staying out of the battle trying to avoid the battle. He has invited us into it so we can stand into it and become a, a source of truth to those around us. So what does this look like practically? Well, we went over a few things um, in our own lives what it can look like to, to deflect arrows and to speak truth into uh, circumstances uh, and to, to use... God's faithfulness and declaring it over a certain situation and saying, this has happened in the past and I believe that God can do this today. And so we pick up a shield in that way. But I believe as a group as well, we need to pick this up. And so what does this look like, picking up a shield together? Walking together with faith, in faith, blocking the arrows, the flaming arrows of the enemy as a group. That kind of feels like a, a, a bit different of a scenario. Maybe not one that we, we consider the value of it uh, and we don't walk in it. And it's this, this particular area that I feel that the Lord has just really kind of zeroed me in on here as, as a word for us here today. Um, 
Not that what has happened in the past is, has been wrong. But I felt like the word for us today was, is in this walking in faith as a group and how that looks. And so as a group, as we're walking faithfully, we, we have the scriptures. We've, we've been reading scriptures. If, if you've been in the church for years, we've had, we have the stories of God's faithfulness. And so that's there. And that's part of our story. But God's faithfulness continues, does it not? And each one of our stories has elements of God's faith in it. And I think a big part of that, if we're not willing to share and talk about God's faithfulness, it limits our ability to be shielded by the darts of the enemy as a group. And so we, we like to give time for people to share, to talk about that, because it encourages us, right? When I see God working in your life and delivering you from something, you name it. There's been many things shared already, but that encourages us. And it gives us an understanding that God is still working among us. And that we can continue to add to God's story of faithfulness and it becomes more. The interesting thing about faith is that through Jesus' ministry, uh, he made it very clear that it's not uh, once you have it, you have all of it. But it's a journey in growing in faith. He spoke to his disciples very early on, uh, right after a storm and the reaction to it. He said, oh, you of little faith. And so he made it very clear and spoke at different times that there's small amounts of faith and there's greater amounts of faith and that we can grow in our faith. And so this journey of increasing the size of our shield, if you will, is an ongoing and the way to do that is to encourage each other, to build each other up, and to continue to share God's faithfulness among us. And at times, our stories of faith, when we respond to God's faithfulness, are incredibly encouraging. But if we rely on that too much, we're going to be disappointed eventually. Because we make mistakes. I make mistakes. And so we can't make that our focus. Building the kingdom is about talking about God and his faithfulness. And that needs to be our focus. And so I encourage you, as you think about um, this looking to each other and sharing God's faithfulness, we, we need to open our eyes and see more of the ways that God is faithful around us. He has, he has done so much and continues to do so much around us. But if we don't talk about it and describe it and encourage each other with it, it can start to feel like we're kind of alone and that God isn't faithful anymore. And that's why I believe as a group, walking together and holding up shields will deflect a lot of darts. You didn't see in that picture that there's half of the guys with their shields up, did you? That would have left holes for the enemy to launch arrows into. It's an entire group thing. And if we're going to march up to the front lines of the battle that God has called us into, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have to be united in our faith and holding it up. So the word that I felt the Lord laid on my heart, I wrestled with him this morning over sharing it. Because I didn't feel like it was in some ways fair. And I felt like it could be misheard here this morning. But he made it very clear that I needed to share it. And so I'm, I'm going to do the part that I feel that the Lord has called me to, to be obedient to him. And so I want you to hear the Lord's heart in this. This congregation has been through a lot in the last years. And like I mentioned, the enemy doesn't miss any opportunity he can to divide us and to put us against each other, to frustrate us and to see us dispersed because he would love nothing more than for that to happen. 
And God can redeem all that. If there is a dispersion, he has redeemed that. And he can make good come out of anything because that's who God is. He is faithful at growing and making people better, stronger in him. The journey that God has led this congregation on, it's been a journey of God's faithfulness. He has not left this, this group of people in any way. You have shared your stories of God's presence in here. And those are the things that disperse the fear. And so I encourage you to keep sharing the stories of God's faithfulness among us because we as a group need it. Not only that, God has, this building, it's a big building for our size right now. But God is using the ministries that are part of this in a very powerful way. And we need to see God's faithfulness in them as well. In the coming months, we're going to have opportunity for some of those ministries, hopefully all of them, to come and share their story. Their stories of faithfulness and how God is walking with them and using them. And so I want you to listen for the ways that God is faithfully desiring to grow the community of faith around us. Growing his kingdom. I was reading in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. This is a very, very common passage. But this just really struck me uh, as I, I thought, was thinking about this whole idea of us as a, as a congregation um, in, in the context of what, what, what is the Lord calling and inviting us to be as a faithful people? How does he want to use us? Well, this is Joshua's letter, or Jeremiah's letter, I should say, to the exiles who had been carried off. And in this letter, I'm just going to read verse 7. He says, Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And I felt like the Lord was saying, this isn't about you alive. Look at the community around you who I've placed around you. Seek the prosperity of the ministries that are already here. And maybe the ones that we haven't seen or haven't recognized Pray for them. Come alongside what I am doing with them. And you will prosper. Because I am faithful. God is the faithful one. It's possible that the enemy has launched a lot of darts at us as we share space with many people and ministries. And it's possible those, those darts have caused pain and hurt and disruption. But let's recognize where those darts are from. Let's call them what they are. And let's speak truth over them. And let's let God's faithfulness and God's story of faithfulness that he is continuing to write be our protection so that we can come alongside one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ who serve alongside of us, and we can help together to grow the kingdom of God in this community and wherever he takes us and leads us. Take up the shield of faith. God is inviting us to, so that we can be on the front lines of his battle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. It is unlike anything that we can compare to or relate to here on this earth. Father, forgive us when we try to see it and we see it on our, the terms and things that we know. Father God, may you draw our hearts towards yours. 
May you connect us with those who are kingdom builders around us, that we can partner together for your purposes and your causes. Lord, forgive us where we have allowed the enemy to disrupt uh, the things that you want to do. Things that have broken up unity and teamwork and partnership for your kingdom. Father, I thank you that it's not our faithfulness that is our shield, but it's your faithfulness. We thank you and praise you for the work that you are doing in us and will continue to do as you change lives, as you prepare us and lead us into the, the future for the purpose of growing your kingdom. May your glory come and be known among us and among this community. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand for our response song. We'll sing the hymn, Faith is the Victory that Overcomes the World. I think it'll get the page number for the hymnal, too. I have it in the, the Mennonite hymnal number 589. <laughs> David, for your message this morning that God laid on your heart and for sharing everything that he asked you to share this morning. And uh, again, I'm, I'm challenged. Um, 
by that message. Um, and also see it, I'm reminded that it's a privilege to be a part of God's battle, to be called into that role as doing whatever I can do with the gifts that God has given me or has given you. Um, we can be so thankful for that and that we don't fight alone. Um, that's what stood out to me in this message this morning is that at times we are called to be right there on the front line fighting the battle um, and we're invited by God to be a part of that but we don't fight that battle alone and I'm thankful for our church family here the many years that I've been a part of this congregation and I didn't even mention it this morning at first but I noticed Jack and Kathy Scandrett are here this morning guys if you get a chance, say hi, welcome them um, after the service this morning, but it's a pleasure to have you guys here. Um, also, being a part of my life journey here, uh, Pastor Jack was a uh, lead pastor here when I started coming and um, has made a difference in my life as well. Um, so yeah, we have a church family that we can fall back on and we go together in this battle um, when we put our shields together um, we can extinguish the errors of uh, the enemy. So for a benediction, I'd like to read something from Romans and just see that through this faith, we have a hope that um, can't be matched anywhere else. And Romans uh, fifteen thirteen says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Go in peace.